All right, in this video, I will be replacing the electrical plug-in for my air compressor. You can see the plug here, and the ground plug has been broken off. And you can also see that in the state of California, this product may cause cancer or birth defects, so wash your hands after handling, I guess. First thing I'm gonna do is cut off the old plug, obviously as close to the plug as possible, so that I don't lose the actual length of the cord. You can see in there, there is a black, a white, and a green wire. And in this application, the black is your hot, the white is your neutral, and the green is the ground. However, that could vary location to location, at least in North America, that's usually the standard. So I picked up this replacement plug from Lowe's. It was only $5. There's two screws in the back that need to come off and it kind of splits open which I do like the concept of. I do not like that the black piece in there is really hard. I did have to take a Dremel and expand that a little bit. So for this, the brass colored screw located right there will be where the hot wire will be connected. The silver colored screw will be the neutral where the white wire is connected and the green screw on the bottom is obviously the ground. And I took the side cutters and just ripped this old plug-in apart and you can see on the right hand side is the black wire so the hot wire coming through you can see the ground going obviously to the ground and you can see the white wire goes to the left hand side and if I hold those things up that is exactly how I mentioned it the brass screw is the hot screw silver screw is your neutral and the green is your ground if you don't know or you have some strange color combinations in your wire, it may be a good idea just to cut everything back and see where everything's connected on the device that you had that was working previously. So first thing I do is cut the sheathing off the cable, exposing the three wires so that I could actually install them into the device. For this, I'm just using an X-Acto knife and just cutting the sheathing. And you need to be very careful that you don't cut the insulation on the wires underneath. If you do that, you'll have to start over and cut it back a little bit. So I am going to check to make sure that I didn't cut anything, and in this case I did not. There are various types of wire strippers you can use. For this I'm stripping about three quarters of an inch of the wire back from the insulation so that I have enough space to actually secure it to the new plug-in that I got. You'll notice I'm twisting the wires up and that's just to keep everything together so that there's not little runaway pieces of wire sticking out because obviously that could cause a short or other grounding issues. So the first one that I'm going to install is the hot wire, which is going again onto the brass screw for this device. Really just slots in and then once it's screwed in, just make sure that it doesn't pull back out. You should give it a, a little security tug there. The next wire I'm putting in is the neutral, again with the silver screw, and ensuring that it is firmly attached to the plug-in. And then obviously the final one will be the grounding wire, which is obviously the green wire in this case, and the screw is conveniently colored green. I'm not sure if this is a universal standard or just a North American standard, so obviously if you're doing this somewhere else, be cognizant of what the wiring code in your area is. So there's a close-up of everything wired in. So for this clamshell plug-in, you can see that I had to take a Dremel tool and just sand those down about two millimeters each all around, just because the, the clamshell wouldn't close around the, the wire. It seemed to be too fat. I'm not entirely sure why that is. If that was a, like a softer material, maybe it wouldn't have that issue, but just because those two black plastic pieces are very hard plastic, they have no give to them when you try to put the screws in and it stays partially open, which I didn't want. However, after about 30 seconds with the Dremel tool on each piece of plastic, it fit much better. It's still nice and tight. And the, the clamshell effect is still very tight around the electrical cord that goes to the air compressor. And obviously the last thing I'm doing is just tightening the two screws that hold everything in place and ensure that the cord is fully clamped in place. And just like that, it is ready to go. Overall, this job took about 20 minutes and cost a whopping $5 to do. Obviously, if you needed some additional tools, it would cost you a little bit more. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.